Welcome to the e-commerce expert podcast, where we get up close and personal with the superheroes of e-commerce, getting them to reveal their most profitable tactics and strategies to help you level up your e-commerce game. So fasten your seatbelt and get ready for an info-packed ride with your host, e-commerce entrepreneur and digital marketing OG, Derek Gale. Welcome to the e-commerce expert podcast. This is your host, Derek Gale. And today's guest is a bit of a legend, actually, in the world of e-commerce. This guy's been building brands online for well over a decade, but got to start 16 years ago at the uh, ripe old age of 20, where he quickly became actually the number two uh, Bose audio distributor in North America. And uh, he's had an incredible career. He's built numerous uh, seven to eight figure agencies in e-com, in social, in the creator space. He coaches uh, e-commerce entrepreneurs over the world, ha- helping them scale their businesses. He, I thought I'd spent a lot on advertising. He spent over an a hundred million dollars on advertising. And uh, so this is going to be as one of our inaugural episodes of this podcast. I think this is going to be an exciting conversation. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Los Silva to the show. Los, thanks so much for being here. Okay, dude, you've been at this for a while, uh, 16 years. Um, I always like to start with the journey. How did you get into this? And, uh, you know, give us give us the rundown and how you got here today. So I started uh, really through uh, eBay. Uh, I, I lived in, uh, I was going to college and uh, me and my buddy were just messing around on eBay. Uh, and he started selling Crown Victoria cards. And I was like, yo, that's pretty good. But he was the one that had the kind of license to go out and uh, the dealer uh, license or whatever whatever that is. Uh, and I was like, all right, let me find some other stuff. And I, I found video projectors in focus. Uh, I think they were called 670s. Uh, and I started selling in focus video projectors and I would make a $480 spread every time I sold one. I was a kid. Wow. So if I sold two a week, I was making 4,000 a month. And for me, that was like enormous, right? Uh, and so I was like, all right, what else can I do? I, I want to go high margin on this stuff. I realized that when you are buying that, you want speakers because you've just got a projector and you've got all this stuff, right? So I was like, all right, let me see what I can do. So I became an, uh, a dealer for both speakers. Uh, and it was a little great hat, whatever, but uh, I was young and I started, yep. you know, you're not supposed to sell 100% MS, MSRP. Um, I, I was selling them a little bit under. Uh, and then, you know, one thing got to another and I was selling three, four of those a day. Uh, and those spreads were very significant. And so, uh, at one point, I was uh, almost the number one Bose distributor in the world, uh, in, in the U.S., which is the majority of like how they get sold. Uh, uh, Best Buy was the only people that were beating me. Uh, and I used that to you know, make, a, make good money, get, get, a, get, a, get a decent lifestyle, move forward. I was a kid, so I was spending a lot of money on bottles and going out, not, going out at night and being cool and being an idiot. Um, but then 2008 hit, uh, and uh, at that point, I got, I got something hit with uh, the algorithm and I didn't know about it. I, I didn't know. And so I was like, oh, I guess that doesn't work. And so I actually started an electronic integration business and, and, and like with custom, working with custom homes and uh, architects and designers, producing that inside of other people's homes. Uh, and then the economy hit and uh, all those businesses kind of um, collapsed. And I went out of business because a lot of those other companies went bankrupt and they couldn't pay me what I had already invested. So I was like, man, what do I do? So I, I got into testing things online. I started a company called the home theater store, learned ads that got me into media buying display and then Facebook and all the things. And, uh, I started making courses, started creating content and, you know, almost 20 years later, here, here we are doing the same thing. Wow. So I mean, I always love that origin story. Did Bose ever like <laughs> call you up and say, dude, who are you? Like, how are you doing no. that? Really? No, the only people that I got in trouble with was eBay because uh, they were mapping things out on eBay, but I had more, you know, it was kind of black hat. I had multiple accounts. Sure. Oh yeah. Things. And so, uh, but the, when, when they flipped into basically like anything that the uh, seller uh, would do, wouldn't matter because the buyer would be like, I don't want this or whatever. I started getting scammed because people would start getting those for free. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I don't know how to combat that. I, I didn't know how to even think through combating that. And I was like, oh, this is new. Like, 
I don't want trouble. I'm, I'm out. And so I just took that into retail and local. Um, and still that business, we worked with Disney. We worked with the House of Blues. We did a lot of, a, a lot of big custom homes uh, for even famous people. But, it, you know, it was my first kind of seven-figure business. Um, but then after that, I, I went back on the Internet, went back to knowing nothing mm -hmm. and starting from scratch, kind of trying to learn everything. And since then, I've worked with well over 200 brands. I've built and sold companies. We have a brokerage. We have a bunch of different brands as well now. Uh, and so, you know, you kind of, it's perseverance just kind of kept me going. Yeah. You know, and I always love, uh, I always love talking to people like yourself um, that are on kind of an agency side. I mean, you've done it yourself, first of all. And and that, that's the interesting part. There's a lot of agencies that are run by people that have never actually built their own business. And and I I would suspect that gives you a bit of an advantage when working with companies because you've got a far greater understanding of behind the scenes. Do you want to speak to that? Yeah, so I mean I I actually agree with you. Uh so I we still have agencies. We have 3 right now. Uh I will never not have an agency. The I saw Gary Vaynerchuk do a thing one day and he was like, "You know, I have the I have this big company because Whenever I want to acquire something, I just have an agency that will work on it, and I know that I can trust it. And I was like, shit, that's so real. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes sense. And so we really went with the mindset first of, like, we're building this to get money so we can cash flow our real businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we did that, right? And that's how we built uh, supplement businesses and e-commerce businesses and digital businesses that we ended up selling. Uh, the agency ran it. Uh, as internal companies, right? Um, but it was great because we had the cash flow to be able to buy assets and buy all those things to make that work. I always think it's a little weird when someone's like, oh, I'm an agency owner. Oh, what what, what do you guys own? Because if you have everything, if you have all the assets, you know, if you, if you have the motor and you, you have the gas and you, and you have the spokes and the everything in there, like, why don't you, why don't you drive it? Yeah. The car. Yeah. You know? No, it's for sure. 100%. 100%. It's, it, it makes you a little bit like, I don't know if I want to work with you 100 percent because like you've never done this, yes. and that's 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 another thing that helps us on the aging side. Like oh, the ClickFunnels awards, we have the eight figure stuff, we have a bunch of the seven figure stuff. Shopify awards, we got those things. Like companies, we've sold them. We do this. Mm -hmm. we, now we can do this and help you, right? Yeah. So uh, agencies are they're tough, right? Like picking agencies, working with agencies. In fact, in the e-commerce groups, I mean, I see this complaint all the time. They're like, do I need an agency? Should I hire somebody in house? At what size should I hire somebody in house? Or, you know. I, <laughs> I, I see a lot of guys struggling. It, it sort of once they hit that, you know, proof of concept, right? They know they're going to scale and they start struggling to find agencies. What, what advice do you give e-com guys that are looking for that? I think you should hire an agency uh, if you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think at one point it also makes sense to build an internal company. Uh, but even even at any point, like there, there's agencies that do great jobs. They really are. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if, if you, you know, if, if you're a multiple kind of business entrepreneur, I would suggest working with agencies so you have a group that you can work with and like figure out the numbers and how, how to grow. If it's your first time, I, I would probably hire an agency to get data and to understand where you're off because you don't know these things and that can teach you how to get those things and get that knowledge. Um, but at any point, like you should either be working with one, hiring a team, but even always, even to this day, we have agencies, we hire agencies to beat our controls. Because we know mm -hmm. that either they beat our controls, we're doing something wrong, or they can't beat our controls, we're doing something right. But there, there's never a time not to be working with more people to get more information. I mean, uh, e-commerce, digital, whatever you pick, it's all data, right? And so it, the more data you can acquire faster, the better decisions you can make. When you're, when you're not spending and not trying and just wishing and hoping, that's when like no one knows anything and no one can tell you. And an agency is usually going to let you down. The other thing is... Uh, but a lot of people sometimes hire an agency and they expect them to like change their life, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and it's like, hey, uh, you do my marketing, you 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 build this for me. Like you're paying them almost piss money or a little bit better than that. Uh, but if they let you down, they're cut. Mm -hmm. But if they do too well, you don't want to pay them that. So you've got to realize this is your company, buddy. And so what are you going to do to make that move to make that thing grow, right? Because a lot of times people have that expectation, like, oh, he 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 sucked for me, like. Well, was your conversion well? well uh, do you have the right products? Do you have a good ascension? Are you calculating your own lifetime value? Are you expecting them to do everything, but you're paying it for ads and creative? Right. So if I'm hearing you, and correct me if I'm wrong, before you engage an agency, you need to have a strong enough offer that's been proven. 
A hundred percent. You have to have, you have to have, or you have to have the money to prove sure. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and let's, let's talk about offer. Let's talk about brand. I know you've talked about this. Uh, you've given talks on this and it was one of the topics I wanted to dig into with you because this is something I've been kind of frustrated with as I hear people saying that, Oh, I've got a brand. And when the reality is they don't have brands, they have offers. You have a, you have, you have a skew. They have a skew, right? Um, let's unpack that and, mm-hmm. and, and dig in there. Okay. Uh, how do you define a brand? What's the difference between an offer, a skew, or a brand? And and yeah, a brand is a community. It's a, it's a concept. It's a lifestyle. It's a decision. It's it's the same as like people will choose to work with Derek uh, because he's Derek, right? Like it it in in and then anything you move forward from that is like the brand that it like extends from you. Uh, a lot of times people have something. A lot of dropshippers do this. They have something. Yo, this thing is working. It's a thing. You just called it that. It's a thing. Mm-hmm. And then someone's co- – it's an affiliate offer, man. Someone's copying your stuff. They get, they rip it and they can they can get the same thing off Alibaba or below overload, whatever. Uh, and now they're, they're challenging you and they're working more on their conversion. So you've got to switch into something else. A brand, a brand makes less money sometimes. Often, more times than not, it actually makes less money, mm-hmm. right? Because you're investing in like, what else do these people want? Let me invest in these SKUs. Let me build this lifetime value. Let me let me invest in this community, this Facebook group, or whatever the case. Let me create. You know, sometimes brands have to spend money. I never I never realized until I got older. You know, I always thought Coca Cola when I was younger. I'm like they're stupid. They're already Coca Cola. Are they spending money on on just being re- like, hey, it's Coca Cola? It's impressions. Like they're 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 spending money on brand. They're spending money on you remembering that they're Coca Cola and not Pepsi. That's why they're number one. And Pepsi, no matter how you say it, ninety nine percent of people, oh, that's number two, because they spend more money on being number one. They're top of mind. A brand will be top of mind. A, a skew, uh, 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 affiliate offer, they're they're never going to be top of mind. They're the quickest hits to get there. But it's the hardest business to build. Can you make a ton of money? A hundred percent. Can you keep a ton of money long term and build something from that? Most likely not. Interesting. So, and I think, you know, listening to how you started off in the very early days as well, would you agree that most brands start off as an offer? I think, I think most, most brands start off as an offer. Yes. Uh, I think drop shippers only start off as offers. Yeah. I, I think you make a decision, you know, uh, we talked to, I, I actually, there's a, a thing I say, there's an e-com guy and there's a direct to consumer guy. Just as an example, mm-hmm. the direct consumer guy can be doing ten million a year and paying himself two hundred thousand a year, <laughs> not a month, a year. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yo, you can take more money from that. Like, no, I want an exit. Mm-hmm. The the ecom guy can make two hundred grand a month and take one hundred a month if if it's available. But at the same time, that guy is going to have to do another thing and another thing and another thing, and he's either stealing from the company or he's stealing from himself because he's still going to have to reinvest money in whatever's next. The D to C guy is not. The D2C guys be like, yo, I allocated a budget for me to have a lifestyle until this creates a scenario where I can exit, right? And so the mindset of that person is very different. Oftentimes, you see all the things you see on social media, they're, they're e-com guys. Oh, I made this much. I made this much. Mm-hmm. And you know, for all the people that are just starting or kind of in the middle, listen, I can show you a screenshot of a million dollars in a, in a week. It doesn't mean I made it. I didn't make it. I did not make it at all. <laughs> right? Like it's not true. Yeah, for sure. That, that might, dude. I, I got companies that we work with that are that try to sell their business. And hey, we did twenty one million last year. Oh, what did you guys do this year? Twenty, but we're negative even at one million. All right, so you guys aren't sellable. Yeah, you have nothing, right? And that's a D to C guy. Like they got to get investment. They got to grow into bigger things. Are they going to probably sell more likely than the guy flipping the newest tech product on TikTok? Hundred percent. Right, but it's your choice of the lifestyle of when you want. I don't want to work with or or by any chance like create something that I got to work more on the next year or just if if twenty twenty four January starts, I got to start over again too. Like that's exhausting. Right, right. So, it, I mean, you deal with exits all the time, right? So that's obviously one of one of your strengths now. Um, for guys that are just starting out in the e-com space or they're sitting at that half million or million dollar mark, what do they need to start thinking about? Uh, you got to start thinking about the end in mind. Why are you doing this? Do you want to do this for a sale? What is a sale? And don't say because you did 5 million gross one year, the next thing's a $100 million exit. That's That's outlandish, right? Like you've got to really think about your EBITDA. If you're doing probably like half a million EBITDA, you might sell for six million bucks. If you're doing a million EBITDA, you might sell for, you know, 
six to ten. Uh, if if you, if you want money for long term, think about how do I build an exit. And at, at any point, like what am I creating? What do I want out of this lifestyle? Do I can I float two hundred or maybe three hundred a year for myself? What does that business need to be like so it's capitalized and it's healthy? Mm -hmm. Because no one's going to buy an unhealthy business, and if they are, it's going to be in a shit EBITDA, a bad clip for you, and you're going to be like, oh, what happened? Like, I'm crushing it. Like, no, you are crushing it. The business isn't, right? So who are you feeding? Are you here to feed yourself fast, or are you, feed, are you here to feed the business for long term? And so you've got to really make that decision. If you just want to flip businesses quick and, and just create some stuff where like every, every other month or every six months you've got something new, and you have that team, cool. But if you want to create a culture, if you want to create value, if you really want to get into uh, bigger companies and, and step into a different marketplace, you're, you might have to take a loss, on, not a loss financially 100%, but make less than you, you think you could mm -hmm. because it's, it's for a better term, right? There's a book by Ray Dalio. It's called Principles. He talks about the owner of consequences. If, if I take, take, take for my business, the consequence is going to be that I have to give, give, give back when I need something. So I'm really not taking anything. I'm just holding it in my account and I'm paying taxes for it, right? The, the truth is I got to keep that business healthy so I can get to where I want to be. And that creates a different order of consequences because it's creating different decision matrices inside of like what you're trying to operate. Right. Okay. So for the people that are listening, they're thinking about, okay, yes, they've decided I want to, I want to exit. I mean, honestly, I don't understand, I guess, you know, some people decide they just want to pull cash out of it and have a business that generates cash flow for them. Um, personally, uh, I think especially in the e-com space, an exit's kind of the, you know, that, that that's the holy grail of where we want to be, right? Mm -hmm. um, so right now, just out of curiosity, in the e-com space, what do the multiples look like? Uh, you're looking at four to seven. Yeah. Seven if it's super healthy. Realistically, four to fives. Four to fives, okay. And and for everybody listening, we're talking about EBITDA, a multiple of EBITDA, four to five times EBITDA. Yeah, no, no, no one that has an e-com business is going to sell at a multiple of gross. It's a software or a media property or something like that that's going to be that way. But you're looking at four to five, maybe six, if it's very tight, multiple channels, very good distribution, mm -hmm. recurring revenue, subscription revenue, uh, Facebook groups, activity, uh, good healthy email list, multiple drops coming in. Like you've got a plan. This thing is working. You're going to sell for more. If not, you're probably looking at four. Okay. All right. And uh, so one of the things I just want to highlight there is you said multi-channel. And, and there's a lot of e-com business I come, or, or, you know, I mean, they're, they're either just pure, pure up Amazon or, um, you know, they figured out one media buying channel and they're, they're ride, riding that horse. Any time. It can go in at any time. So that's why you're getting less because, you know, two years ago, you could have got that for seven maybe even eight. Mm -hmm. uh, now you can't because people are like, hey, this is a lot of work and we don't know if your average order value is going to match our cost per acquisition. So I'm not actually excited about trying to build a completely new division mm -hmm. to try to build the CPA to match your AOV on products that are kind of slow and cheap and, and frankly we haven't even tested and you haven't even tested so people are getting a little bit more astute to it you know a lot of people are like oh the, the multiples are not what it used to be the multiples were fake for a couple of years <laughs> you know the, the, the stock for Shopify was in the 900s mm -hmm. and now it's like much smaller I'm like yeah it's it's where it was if you compared it to 2018 2019 it's right where it needs to be yeah it's logical makes sense right now right yeah. it's logical yeah. yeah 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 and we go through these periods where the markets get all out of whack Everything is cyclical. yeah right yeah. if you can exit at the peak of insanity good on you um if you can exit at any time good on you man don't be yeah. naive and conceited enough like oh, i'm different than everyone else like statistics are statistics you're not yeah yeah so true so true um okay so one of the things, and I'm changing a little bit of direction here. One of the things I've heard you talk about uh, is your shift from paid ads to more content and, and media. Um, to talk about that. Like, I mean, obviously you still buy media, but it sounds like you're, yeah. you're focusing more heavily on brand building content, stuff like that. Well, we, we just believe that both are important. I used to not think that at all. I thought brand building was stupid uh, because I was heavy direct response. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not the world we live in anymore. People care about what they're buying, who they're buying it from, what's going on, the community, the content, the relationship. And people used to care more about the click. And that's, that's happening less. So if you add this stuff, 
and you will lose money. You will lose money, but it'll increase the conversions that you have moving forward, right? It's a better section for retargeting. It's a better section for helping people like get to know your brand. It's a better opportunity to build a list. It's a better opportunity to build a community. Are those things harder? Do you have to invest more in that? 100%. But it's not even just about you trying to make money on it mm -hmm. uh, and, and have a sale, which would make sense. But it's also about like they're the the guys you're really competing against, they're doing this and they're losing money by doing all of it. And they can calculate it that by day 77, they can break back even because of the recurring revenue. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Okay. So interesting. So you're not saying it's one or the other. It's a buy. It, it's it, not. It's, it's both. both. It's direct response and it's brand building. It's for sure. Both. Now, one, one yeah. of the things and I've been kind of preaching this for a long time. Um, I think it's, you start with direct response and then branding, it's not a byproduct of direct response because you got to really focus on that. But direct response brings in the initial leads and customers that you then build a brand around. Is that how you, I think so? Yeah. Yeah. I, I always start with ads because I need to I need to see if people are gonna choose their wallet, not me make a decision. We have we have a saying in all of our brands that like emotions uh, create errors and data builds decisions. Yeah. And so the only way that I can say, like, you know, this page is sick, this product's awesome. We'll spend some money and see what do they say. Yeah, <laughs> and then you'll see if they, if they actually think that or not. Yeah, but with their dollars. The uh, so let's talk about the community a little bit because that's that's one of those terms. We're like build a community, and I don't even think people really understand what that means in terms of a brand. How would you define that if somebody's like, well, what does that mean? It's 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 a place for conversations, right? It's your text email list. Uh, it's your email list. It's it's your Facebook group. Mm -hmm. It's your blog. It's where I can go to get an understanding of what's going on. If, if you look at uh, even brands now, like a lot of people, what's going to happen now with influencers because they're kind of becoming irrelevant is people are going to give equity to people and say, hey, let me let me give you three points, five points, whatever, but like make this a part of your conversation every day, right? Right. It's being a part of the conversation every day. Let's send some text messages and get a 90%, 95% open rate instead of just a 40% open rate on email and see there's a different modality of people. Gen Z is going to open that text, you know, uh, millennials and boomers are going to open more of the email side still, right? Like let's have another place where people can have a conversation. Let's start selling some merch and, and make people believe in this community, especially if you have a clothing mm -hmm. line. Um, let's 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 create a place where people feel like they can go ask us questions because you're solving a problem for someone or you're making someone feel some type of way and so they're going elsewhere to find this might as well be the one to build it right I, I want to I unpack something you just said there influencers are becoming irrelevant tell me about that they've sold everything to everyone so it's unbelievable that, oh, just try these gummies. Or if you look at, if you look at, um, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. So we used to be able to swipe up and make fifty k in a day, mm -hmm. in an hour, even. Now you have the same influencers swipe up and they'll make five hundred bucks, right? So no one buys their shit because everyone because he's selling ten times things. But if that person stopped selling ten things and started selling one or two, but he believed in it, he talked about it, he made it a part of his lifestyle. That person is going to be able to go back to pulling out fifty thousand dollars, maybe weeks, not not days anymore. But it helps the people that are coming through that are building a brand with them, right? Uh, because people want to believe that like that's really something you're attached to, and people know now like if you're selling skinny teas and and gummies and whatever the heck you're selling. You got paid, man. Cool. Paid advertisement. Paid mm -hmm. paid sponsorship. Awesome. I, I don't give a shit. Like you're just now. This is the time where I shut off my brain because you. It's not a part of your life. But when it's a part of your life, yeah. it's great. Right. So, are you seeing the influencers start to adapt and figure this out, or? Uh, um, yeah. Some, some companies and some influencers, I think it goes both ways because they don't know what to do. They're creators. I've worked with uh, influencers that I've sold companies with, and I was paying them at one point. I put them in my LLC. I, I was paying them a hundred plus thousand dollars a month. They went to uh, they went to Hawaii for a couple of months and said, "Hey, you got this. Just run more ads." I was like, well, "I'm going to need you for that, right?" Yeah. Uh, and they they stop right because they're creators. They only care about the person and creating, and the, but once money comes in, they don't care about anything. Right. Uh, and so it's really, it has to be managed by the company and, and create expectations to support them because they only know how to create, create content or be influencers. And there's a difference. Influencers are more, what it used to be is like this person you follow and you really admire. Yeah. 
They're like, oh man, I love them. Like, I just buy everything they do. Creators are now creating like fun ways for you to buy something that you don't know about. And and do these creators have the same social clout, the following that an influencer does? They don't. Okay. Because no. What I'm seeing and what I've actually started doing, working with a few different agencies, is we're they're not using influencers anymore to create content. They're using actors. Uh, yeah, that makes that well. They're using creators. Creators are actors. I guess yeah. They're, they're creating great like concepts and content and, and fun, engaging things. An influencer is just a pretty face. Yeah, and they're just they're just a they're they're nothing now. I mean, I I don't think you know the Kardashians had to move into like we own everything that we do because not that people won't pay them. They're like they stopped paying them because they were like you know when we do pay you, you don't produce value. Yeah. So they're like, all right, let me go to skins. Let me go to my makeup. Let me talk about my makeup every day. Let me talk about my my skins every day. Let me talk about all these things, right? When they talk about like, hey, try this water. Try this. Try this water right here. Yeah, cool. Like you were pictured with it, but I don't believe you. Yeah. I don't trust you. You know, and a creator is creating this fun scenario, this like almost cool ass ad by themselves on a on a twenty seven dollar budget. That you're like, dude, this is fucking cool. But they just edited everything on their TikTok, yeah. you know. And so they're going to those people more because they realize, man, if we have more of this, we have more attention. And if you look at TikTok, if you look at Instagram, who do you follow? You follow people you know, mm -hmm. and you follow people you admire, and you follow some meme pages. If you look at TikTok, you follow people you fucking have no clue who they are, <laughs> but but you enjoy what they do. <laughs> yeah. Like you can't, I can't tell you who I follow on TikTok. I just like their stuff and I'm like, oh, cool. I don't know, right? But my Instagram is this like fake facade of like, oh, I only have like 300 followers, but all my friends are like uh, a couple of steps away from my friends or famous people. Sure. But, but TikTok's like, I got 2,000 people I follow and I love them. What do they do? Like stuff. They talk about conspiracies. <laughs> they, they talk about cooking. They just do shit. It's fun as hell. I love watching their stuff. Yeah. And so that is attractive. And you really listen, everything's about impressions, everything's about clicks, right? Even your relationships with your family. I always say the reason you love your best friend, it's not because he's your best friend, it's because he has the most impressions in your life consistently. Same as mom, same as dad, right? I have two girls. Uh, and I when I talk about my kids, um, some people don't like it, but I'm like, listen, I, I talk about I talk about them as impressions. I have video view options and I have conversion options. So video view is like when I when I spend time with them and I I, I don't claim that click i just make them remember mm -hmm. or i make them have uh spend the night like her friends spend the night at my house and i buy them crumble cookies and i make it all that right because i get someone else to talk about me right that's that like video view and then the conversions when i take them to universal and i do whatever and i'm like if i do this you do that like hang out with me here and like there's a there's a like a like a a contract almost right like hey if i do this you do that cool but i'm always working on impressions yeah. even if it's impressions on their friends because that way even when i'm not around they're gonna be your dad was awesome he got us this and this and this it's impressions and so the more impressions you can get on anything mm -hmm. the more eyeballs you can get on anything subconsciously no matter if it sucks or not you're convinced that this is something you need to be interested in yeah and that's just advertising. Well, well, well I was going to say, isn't brand. that how you define, you know, traditional branding like a Coca-Cola? That's exactly yeah. it. It's just changing a little bit. No one cares about your your uh, your 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 big uh, what is it called when you're driving by? Uh, oh, uh, billboard. Your billboard. No one cares. Yeah. No one gives a shit about your yeah. billboard. Your billboard now is random people, random testimonials. If you look at test like what works now a lot on UGC. It's testimonials and unboxings. It's random people being like, hey, I like this. And then you retargeting back to someone else being like, I had success with this. And then retargeting back third time to like, hey, this is who we are. Mm -hmm. You don't even start with this is who we are if you really want to have fast conversions. You start with the trick. Of like, hey, this was awesome. Oh, what? Who's, who? I like you. What was that? Oh, that seems cool. Retarget back to like, oh, they had success with that thing that I thought was cool. Then go back to like, oh, this is the company that my friend thinks is cool that I follow. Not really my friend, but he's an influencer. And I have two testimonials that I remember off that thing. And they have a community here. So let me join it. Boom, sale. It's a longer sales cycle, but it's what you have to do to be relevant and succeed nowadays. So, so everybody who's listening, I, I hope... I uh, let's just change your whole perspective on hiring influence. I see, I see it. I hear it all the time. Still in the e-com space, people are like, "Well, uh, you know, how do I hire influencers? You know, what kind of ROI should I expect from an influencer?" Uh, like two Facebook groups I belong to, I've seen that question in the last week. Right? Um, it's kind of dead. 
in terms of you should expect none. none. Not none. Yes, none. none. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely none. A hundred percent. Listen, we're 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 getting to the point in e-commerce where like this 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 is about if you're wanting to build a brand. I I, I am not the one to talk to if you want to just like make six hundred thousand dollars a month selling like a like a quick booklet or or a, or a little trinket or whatever. But if you want to build a company, you have to start thinking what's my budget allocated for this this quarter for ads, mm -hmm. retargeting, views, content, <clears throat> and and creators. And you have to understand like what's going to be maximized and efficient even – but it's on a blended now. It's not really on like just the exacts. It's going to be your ROAS based on your media, right? Yeah. The other stuff, you're going to have to you're going to have to blend that into a six-month program to figure out like, hey, these guys worked. This is how many impressions they got over this quarter. But then this quarter, this worked, but we added this and we built a better funnel. We were testing it too, not just toss them some shit and say, hey um, – Promote this to a lander we don't test often and whatever the case. Like it's not just their fault. It's yours. Did you tell them what ad to do? Did you tell them what script to say? Did you create an uh, opportunity where they can create their own product with you and say, hey, this is, you know, I had a, I had a buddy that I helped and I was like, hey, well, um, he had a clothing line. He was like, let's start a clothing line, but you're not going to own it, but you own it. But let's say that you're doing a promotion with this clothing line and they get your, your designs exclusively first. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's stupid. I own it. I was like, well, let's tell them that later. And we launched it and it launched at six figures and now he's crushing it. And then he was like, Hey, I'm an owner of this company now. Same story. Yeah. Same thing happened. But if, if he would have been like, Hey, I like this stuff. This, this is a X, Y, Z brand. No one gives a yeah. shit about your design. But if you're like, I designed this, I'm doing a promotion with these guys. This is my heart and soul. Let's run it. Limited edition, then close it, then open it back up. You have to have a program for people. You have to have a process for what you're doing. If you're just doing it to like, let's get this money. Those days are kind of – they're not gone. They're not gone. Direct response, loan copy, all these things exist and they work. But they're not going to give you the numbers they gave you in 2015, mm -hmm. 16, 17. So, I mean, really, it's – it's yeah, it's a long game. and It's a long game. E-commerce yeah, e is yeah. – e I think e-commerce is the hardest business to, to, to build. It's, it's an easy business to make a ton of revenue. Mm -hmm. Like probably the easiest. Probably the easiest to make a ton of revenue. Yep. It's the hardest business to build – yourself a big check on and a strong exit in yeah well it, it, to build a strong exit without having to build a software empire with massive vc right. funding that takes 10 years and you know it, it, it's probably the fastest i've seen that you can scale up an exit 100 percent. if you're playing the business right yeah if you're doing the right accounting you're looking at profit and losses you're treating it like a company what are my quarterly goals you know, we work with a lot of people that are like, I want to do this, 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 this. Or we work with a lot of people even before that. They're like, uh, what did you do this year? Uh, we did gross $4 million. What do you want to make next year? 10 I was like, okay. Uh, what if you did What if you did 7 ish mm -hmm. maybe? I'm like, oh, that, I don't, I, that's easy. I'm like, what do you, what would you have to do? Like, just keep running ads? I'm like, no. You'd have to grow 10% consistently month over month to get 120% yeah. growth. Yeah. That's actually what you'd have to do. And 10% it, it, is light work. No, it's not. It's 30% a quarter it continued and compounded. Yeah. If you actually break that shit down, it's really freaking difficult. Sure. Yeah. You're actually growing 2 to 3% and then 7% one quarter, maybe 15 another, then a summer slump's going to get you. Then you catch up with a 30% on the Black Fridays and all that. Math, math your stuff out. I bet you it's not as easy as you think, man. Well, I, I think what happens too is a lot of people take the the growth trajectory they saw when they were in the six figures, where you know going from a hundred grand to two hundred grand is pretty easy, right? Hey, yeah, working with two. Yeah, people. exactly. Why why can't I do that sure. from from four to eight? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, man. It's I'm not saying this is a hard business. It's just a bus It's like business if you look at it as business mm -hmm. and not just a check. Is difficult. It takes process. It takes time. It takes cash flow. It takes understanding that. It takes understanding that you're trying to get people involved into a mission and a vision and a goal that you want. Even if you sell wallets, why are these wallets the best wallets? Well, these wallets are the thinnest and best wallets and the most compact, but also have knives and this and this because they're better for outdoors people because this is our mission. This is our guys. Why are your leggings better than someone else's leggings? Because Lululemons are trash. They actually get it done here, here. We, we, we have this and it's better for when you when it's wet and whatever the case like if, if you don't have that people are working at a job and how could you expect somebody mm -hmm. to work hard for you when all they have is a fucking job and a potential check that they don't really even see much growth in it for themselves because they can't see much growth in it for your business yeah
So, so I mean, you've got to get your customers to buy into the brand, but you also got to get your staff to buy into the brand. A hundred percent. Yeah. Creating a culture, um, which if fuck, it's hard. It takes work. Yeah. All this stuff yeah. takes work. That's the thing. I'm always, you know, we, we, we say no to more people than a, but m- probably 90% of people we actually say no to on, on Powerhouse, our mastermind, our, our coaching group, because um, just the kind of people we want to work with are a certain kind of person. And we get a lot of people like, oh, well, everything's working. Everything's this. like, yeah, but you're a conceited owner that's making, you know, $4 million a year, $5 million bucks a year. And all you're thinking about is how you can make one million dollar a year net from from getting to six instead of how you can exit and how you can give equity to people and how yeah. they can work and believe in your product and believe in your mission because listen unless we die we die but until then i'm sure most entrepreneurs are gonna if, if i hand people like yo here's 10 million dollars but you can't work ever again i bet you most people will be like i don't want it yeah totally i don't yeah. want it because you'll die yeah. you'll, you'll be you'll, bored lose purpose like, statistically <laughs> speaking die. people that retire die yeah so true. So, you know, I mean, you hear that story all the time. Guy retired at 65 by 66. He was done, right? Done, done at 68. Yeah, yeah. It's brutal. It's brutal. Um, I, I think probably one of the hardest shifts that I'm hearing here, I've experienced it, is going from very specific measurable ROI to investing in all these things that are, there's not a specific ROI that you can tie to a lot of this stuff. There's not. And that's a mind shift, especially for those of us that came out of direct response. 100 percent yeah uh and it's very difficult to, to actually i'm not even gonna pretend like it's like oh just do this like i'm ha- i have a hard time sure uh because what's really hard is quantifying the other bullshit like all right well we're creating more content we're doing this and this like we're getting more followers hey guys that's not making us money like and like yeah well it's going to I'm like well how do we measure how do we start dialing this number in because we come from math yeah. right we come from like hey i spend i get this is my minimum this is my max this is my lifetime value this is what i have to allocate plus my recurring to actually get me here to break even i'm good i can get the math on mm-hmm. that i can't get the math on just doing for nothing right and you can't get the math when you hire people and like hey we hired you to do well on our ads and like whoa you have a four times rust but it's on it's on amazon yeah but if you quantify how many people lose here, go to Amazon to check if you're a serious business, buy from there because they have Amazon Direct and Prime, easier, blah, blah, blah. Like you have to blend it. And so you have to work on blended because no no attribution system is perfect. Uh, Triple Whale, North uh, Point North or whatever, um, uh, Becker's, uh, High Rose, they're Number. not yeah. perfect. Yeah. And, and one slip actually on those actually breaks a lot of the system yep. on that. And it makes it very difficult to actually requantify what's going on, which makes it harder on your ROAS stuff, right? So you have to figure out how to work on this is my budget. This is our goal. This is what we want to allocate monthly. It, it, that's one way. You could also do daily p and it's, mm-hmm. it's a more bigger business kind of company, but you could be like, hey, this is what we're doing. This is where everything's being allocated. Mm-hmm. But you have to understand and when you're working with a company, whether it's an employee or, or a company, you can't just sit there anymore and be like, hey, I gave you 20 grand of, uh, to spend and uh, it's looking like we made 26. Well, it's looking like 84 over here if you actually quantify our text messages and our emails mm-hmm. and our Amazon and our this. Like, well, that's, that's not the same. Like, nah, bro, at it this is. point, it's 100% the same. I, I think that's an important message that a lot of the, especially the e-com guys got to hear um, because I still see a lot of people out there just chasing direct, you know, direct attribute, last click attribution. It's, gone. it's dead. It's, it's full. Gone. It's fully dead. Um, attribution. And even if it works, it's not how you should be looking at your business. No. Um, now, in terms of systems, so you're talking about high and all these different systems. Frankly, I've never found anything. And now what I have, which is, you know, we're spending 10 to 20 grand a day on ads. And what I have is, and that's not affiliate commissions. That's just straight up our ad buys, right? It's uh, like Google Sheets and everything analyzed with uh, like Google. And Google, like oh, okay, Google good, good. That, that that's exactly what we've ended up with. Google has the best tracking. Yeah, yeah, and it comes into Google yeah. Sheets. We pull our metrics into it. We do the math yeah. on it. Yeah, fuck. I thought it was weird for a while, but I'm glad. Google <laughs> Analytics has the best tracking. Yeah, Google Analytics has the best tracking for the most part, right? They got the best uh, visibility. If you, if you want to quantify like that, yeah, and you can you can run your sheets, and that actually helps you run daily P and Ls if you wanted to do that. Yeah, um, I know it's harder work, but it, you know. Business is hard. If you want to get into the real numbers, you're playing with people that don't give a crap about anything yeah. and they're working yeah. and they're putting yeah. things together and yeah. they're hiring more people to compete. So, I, you know, 
we figured out a really difficult traffic channel. People have been asking me for a very long time, how did you figure this out? And what's this? Well, they, they all want to know the secret. And uh, it is it was literally me spending every single day with our uh, with my media buyer every morning analyzing data for over a year. What's the channel? Oh, uh, that's a secret. I'll share it with you later. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, and and look, we 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 figured it out, and uh, we've been crushing it. And now nobody else can figure it out. But when I've had people, other entrepreneurs, come to me and say, "Well, how did you make this work? How are you doing this? How are you spending this much?" I said, "I sat down every freaking morning for a year and spent a half hour to an hour looking at data and making decisions until we figured it out." There's no. Also, tool. If, if if I can say one more thing on this. Uh, when you start, I don't care if someone works for you, if it's yourself or if you hire an agency, when you start something else, expect to launch it with a loss of money. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Expect to la launch it with a loss, right? Like a lot of people will write pages here all the time. Like, yo, what do you think of it? I was like, I don't care about it. Like, why? Like, look at it. Like, it's irrelevant. Spend money on it. Yeah. And then we'll know what to fix. Yeah. But un until then, like, my, my, oh, it's cute. It's, it sounds dope. Like who cares? Like spend money yes. on it, yes. and, and I, I know that I'm going to lose money on this idea yeah. until I don't, because I realize like, okay, this is what we need to fix. This is what's wrong with with this part and this part. Mm -hmm. Look, you're looking at it right. If you're doing if you're doing e-commerce, you can look at the landers, you can look at the ads, and you can quantify all these things. It's 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 very ones and zeros. If you treat it like mm -hmm. that, if you treat it emotional, like oh, like this guy sucked, he didn't might make a good page, but you suck because you're not spending money on optimizing. Yeah, and and and. Just to extend that, people are going to lose money because you got to lose money to figure it out. But the more yeah. more competitive the traffic niche you're in, even when you've turned it to profitability, you're still going to be losing money for a while till that customer turns a profit. And, and another thing is if you have something working, right, and you, let's say you're spending a, a grand a day and you're like, yo, 4X row has big ballers. And you get the 3K a day and you're like, yo, 2.6. And then you get the 6K a day and you're like, yo, we're having a 0.7. Yeah, you're you're talking to no one, but you have to spend the money and try to figure out how to get them on a lifetime value. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna your expectation of a of a five X ROAS on a, a grand and a three X ROAS on three grand and a point seven on ten thousand dollars a day is that's still doing its job. Your job now is yeah. lifetime value, calculating instead of AOV or LTV and calculating like my emails and how many people can I turn in the next 28 days and like all that kind of stuff. It's it's not the ads need to be converting at massive scale. They can't. You're talking to a you're 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 working off total addressable markets and you're working off niches and then you're expanding into whatever could be. Why would you expect whatever could be to work? It doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So you still now your job is to acquire more, but it's because the back end is what needs to start doing its job. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And that is, uh, I, I, a lot of people need to hear that. They don't want to hear it, um, but you have to. I feel like we just said all the negatives about e-commerce for like. An hour, we we really did, you know. It, but that's it, so it's good. Want to hear. That's so good because it's what people need to hear. I don't mind it. Right, like that's it. What we just explained there. Even the realities. Yeah, it is. And and if you can accept those and move forward, you can crush. But if you can't, don't. Yes, hundred and ten percent, hundred and ten percent. Um, God, I've really enjoyed this conversation, dude. Because you've like just, I, I've honestly, so I've come out of the info space, dude. I, I can be a regular guest on this because I love this conversation too. Yeah, I love it. Well, I mean, we've covered, we've covered all this stuff. We, we're gonna have to come back and just really drill yeah, down into some areas. I can do it. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Okay, dude. Uh, well, be, we we got to wrap up here. Um, before we before we go, um, you know, for those people that are that are sitting there at that five six figures, trying to figure out, you know, what's next. What is the piece of advice you've got for them? Uh, start quantifying your real goals. Stop asking what's next, and don't expect what's next to become from anyone else. Start quantifying what you want your goals to be next. Whether it's more, it's either more SKUs, more traffic, more conversions, or understanding lifetime value as an asset, and and really starting to run traffic from that. Because you're either you're either stuck because you can't spend more, mm -hmm. you don't have enough SKUs, you don't have enough launches, you don't have enough of a list, or you're not losing money on a lifetime value level to understand the gain of that concept. Uh, so that's what would be next for you. 
Uh, and it, it might, you know, on a smaller level, it might just be your creative. It might be your group. It might be your team. It might be you're not testing enough because at this time uh, where we're at now, you know, you could run two, three ads and like, you know, we're killing it. Now you got to run, you know, uh, 17 ads almost in a week. And then if you're in TikTok, you got to read 17 ads in a day, yeah. right? Like everything changes. Yeah. So just be willing to understand that like this, it's getting harder. Uh, but that's a blessing because most people don't want this trouble. <laughs> you know, it's funny. That's why I was. So we spent the last. Uh, it took. I had planned to do a big push, expanding in the EU, um, starting last year. First in Germany. Uh, we were supposed to be started by February, and then it was just you know one obstacle and after another. And by like December this year, we're like, okay, we're still struggling, but we're a couple months away. And I said to my team, who's really frustrated, I said, look, if it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. So when we do get this figured out and we get there, guess what? We have, no, it's a moat around We have business. a moat, a hundred percent. And most people aren't willing to put the time, the effort, the resource that's why and I'm money. In on it. Yeah. Yes. That's why I will do it every yeah. single time and I'll suffer through it knowing it sucks mm -hmm. because no one else wants to do it. But once I pass that hump, you're so far away from me that I can't even understand where you are. hundred percent. 100%. So I mean, if you're and for those listeners that are currently struggling in one of those scenarios, you're like, what the fuck am I doing right now? You know what you're building a moat. You're building a moat. And that's, that's, that's brilliant. All right, Los. So uh, as we wrap up, um, you know, I'll include links and stuff in the show notes. But where do people find you? How do they connect with you? Los hustle on Instagram, I will answer all my stuff. Uh, and powerhouse invite if you're interested in joining our consulting group. Love it. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I look forward to some future conversations. A hundred percent, man. Send me a text. Love it, man. Thank you so much for having me. All right, everybody. This was the uh, e-commerce expert podcast. And uh, if you like what you heard, please leave us a rating or review on your favorite podcast platform. And we will see you again real soon in our next episode. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to the e-commerce expert podcast. If you liked what you heard, make sure to give us a virtual high five by rating, reviewing and subscribing to the show on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to check out our website at ecommerceexpert.com for show notes and bonus materials. See you in the next episode.